Hey everyone, today is the first day of Strangeathon. It's very early. You could probably tell I'm tired, the lighting sucks. You can probably hear the rain, maybe some thunder. We woke up to some severe thunderstorms, so that's fun. Um, the dogs want me to turn the rain off so they can go outside, but you know, can't do that. Uh, so I just wanted to pop on real quick because I completely changed up my TBR from my like announcement video, of course. Um, so one thing that stayed the same was my different format. I'm reading Something is Killing the Children. This is a graphic novel series and I'm reading issues 14, 15, and 16. And I actually woke up this morning and read issue 14 before my son got up, which was really nice. Um, it's like a four star. Uh, it's it's really weird like rating issues because they're so short, but I'm still enjoying the story and I will probably read 15 and 16 today and then I'll have like a prompt done. Um, and so uh, for the LGBT plus rep and for non-human POV, I've changed those to A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, and this is the, I don't know if it's like the story of Dracula, or if it's, it's like Dra one of Dracula's brides recounting her experience or something like that, um, so that should hit for two prompts. And then my folklore, mythology, and odd setting. I think that one stayed the same too, actually. Maybe I didn't change this as much as I thought I did. Um, but I'm reading Piranesi by Susanna Clark. And so I think I should be able to clear the tic-tac-toe board with all this stuff. No, I need a 2021 release. I don't think any of these. Maybe a Diary of Blood? I'll have to double check. But yeah. We'll see how all this goes. They're all fairly short. I'm really hoping to get through them this week. But also I saw, I believe Amanda was reading this or had this on her TBR. I might be wrong. I don't know. I can't remember who it was now. I think it was Amanda. But this is about, it just says an orphan faces a bully alone and plots for revenge. Years later, a girl catches glimpses of a figure in the window of a burned out and abandoned old house. And begins to unravel the mystery of Thornhill. So this would count for a different format as well because it's like half the book is pictures and stuff and half of it is like a normal novel. Um, so I guess you could call this a graphic novel. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this one. I was just browsing the library and they had it right there available. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a go. Uh, I'm actually really looking forward to it. And yeah, so I just wanted to update you on my changes in my TBR as we get this readathon going. I'm really excited. I hope you're joining me. TikTok is so dangerous. I just lost an hour of my life on TikTok. But I've been watching like scary stuff, conspiracy theory stuff, true crime stuff, sprinkling some funny stuff in between because some of that creepy stuff is going to give me nightmares. But um, quick update. I'll put my tic-tac-toe board here because it's I'm making progress. Um, I read those three issues of Something is Killing the Children, and when I was rating them, I realized all of them came out this year, which I don't know why I completely forgot that, so that marks off my 2021 release, and then I saw that issue 17 is coming out tomorrow, so hopefully, I don't know if my library will get it right away, because, like, I get it through Hoopla, so I don't know if there's a delay or anything, but I'm gonna check for it, and I might just, I'll read that too and then be fully caught up with the series issue 15 i think it was like ended this storyline that we were on 
and like 16 or maybe it's 15 and 16 I don't know whatever it is it ended the storyline ended where within one of those issues that I read and they're starting a new storyline which is giving us more background into one of the main characters like the main like monster hunter which I'm really looking forward to like learning more and um yeah so I'll pick that up if my library gets it this week or tomorrow or whatever and then I started reading Piranesi on my kindle I'm only 20% of the way through and it's definitely weird um it I was gonna say that it takes a lot of brain power but it's it's not that it takes a lot of brain power it's just written a little bit differently and because I have no idea what's going on and like the world that we're in is weird and everything there is I have to like focus more and I just accidentally went down the TikTok rabbit hole. So I guess that's all I have to say. That's all I have to update for now. Um, we're doing reading spreads later. And I really hope that I can join in. And just see how my kid behaves. Right, I am doing laundry, drinking coffee, and I thought I would update you on what I have and have not been reading. Um, it's Wednesday, so um, it's been kind of a busy week, just like trying to get out and enjoy the weather and stuff because it hasn't been like 90 degrees. Um, so what I've read so far today is barely anything because again, I decided to take a nap <laughs> instead of, um, reading and, uh, I, I needed it though because this morning we went to the park and I went on a run, which you probably saw, but I had to take my son with me and that is like pushing 50 to 55 pounds up hills and stuff and it was <laughs> just a lot. So, um, yeah, we did that. So I needed a nap. And then, um, I am not really liking Piranesi. Um, like it's not bad. It's not badly written or anything, but it is very, now that I know what's going on and everything, it's very philosophical. Um, and I just don't like stuff like that. Uh, I kind of had an inkling as to what was going on right from the get go. And I, so I won't like spoil it or anything. Um, it is making me want to read another book that I won't say what it is because it'll spoil that book. But I'm thinking, I wonder if I should do that book for one of my, is this book my favorites vlog. Um, kind of experiment and um, yeah so I'm 70% of the way through so I'm just gonna finish it because I'm 70% of the way through um, and I, I want to know what happens but I can just assume that I know what happens and I started a dowry of blood but I've listened to like 10 minutes of it so not that far at all I'm um, hope to listen to some more of it today when we go out on walks and stuff but we'll see how it goes um I've got the horror in 24 group um we've got a live show tomorrow night and then I set up sprints for Friday afternoon for Strangeathon. so yeah it's gonna be um busy next couple of days you know how it goes so yeah I guess that's my Check in for today. All right, Friday. Um I have a few updates because I can't stop messing with my TBR or changing like my prompt picks. Um, I have decided to DNF a dowry of blood for now. 
I am I was listening to it. I think it's a book that I need to read physically. Not because it's confusing or anything, but it's just like certain writing. I, I prefer the physical, like to read it myself. And I feel like if I want, wouldn't do that, I would be forcing myself through the audiobook. And that might affect like how I feel about the book. Um, so that book was going to cover non-human point of view and LGBT. So for non-human point of view, I decided to pick up one of Rain's suggestions, which was The Girl from the Other Side. This right here, I have volume three. Um, so earlier today, I read volume one during our reading sprints. So good. Five stars. I think this is my new obsession. Like, well, let me tell you. When she, when I saw her suggestion, I put volumes one through three on hold at the library. One and three came in. I went, I picked them up this morning, and then I read the first one, and I was so upset because two hadn't come in yet. And so I kept checking my library app, and two came in this afternoon. So we went back to the library, <laughs> and it's only a few minutes away, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, and like we were going out to the park anyways, whatever. And so I got volume two. So I read volume two, another five stars. And this is volume three and I plan on reading it or at least starting it tonight. Um, but knowing me, I'll probably get like super sucked in and just read it. Uh, manga series about this small girl, Shiva, who somehow was, or for some reason was left alone in these woods and this creature takes her under his wing and is taking care of her and there's like this plague it's like a curse but they treat it like a plague and you can't touch these beans or you're gonna catch it so Shiva can't touch this guy monster creature that she calls teacher and um there's some kind of mystery behind her but it is just like so cute like look at them like they have like tea parties and she teaches him how to sew and stuff. This is my new obsession. After I read the first uh, volume, I proceeded to put volumes four through 10 on hold at the library. And then one of you also kindly told me that there's another one coming out. So I'm really excited for that. My only concern is reading so much of it at once that I'll get burnt out from it. But I just, like so far this has reread potential. Like that's, saying a lot coming from me when it's like manga um and so earlier today hosted sprints with Marcy and Amy and I read a little bit of Thornhill by Pam Smy uh, which is another like graphic novel thing so I'm just really in the mood for graphic novels um and back to a dowry of blood so this was replacing non-human point of view and then I needed something to replace LGBT so I decided on paper girls but then I found out about The Low, Low Woods by Carmen Maria Machado. So I'm going to go with that one instead because it's not a series. It's part of some kind of series. I don't remember what it's called. Different authors do different, like, volumes of, of stories. Like, Basket Heads by Joe Hill is a part of this series. And um, so I'm going to read that one instead. And then I also found out or realized that Ice Cream Man Volume 6 is available through my library as well so I'm just gonna breeze through some graphic novels and manga this week or the rest of the readathon this weekend whatever um the one novel that I am working on is Watership Down I'm still working on that it's gonna be like a slower read for me I'm really enjoying it though I went ahead and even got like um the ebook copy for my library because I've got this really like old copy and like it's hard to read physical books a lot because my son just wants to like rip it out of my hands and destroy it um but I'm enjoying it so far I'm not that far in 50 pages into the physical book um so it's a pretty long one too um yeah so I think that's it for now I filmed my summerween TBR slash July TBR today. It's going to be a busy month in July. Um, I want to read all the things, but I also don't want to read anything. But I also only want to read graphic novels. And it's, um, it's a mood. But 
yeah, I'm looking forward to just relaxing the rest of the night, reading my books, probably falling asleep early because instead of napping, I did sprints. <laughs> so it's productive. Oh yeah, so I'll check in later, see you tomorrow, whatever. All right, it's Sunday, the last day of the readathon. Um, last night we had our live show where we just hung out and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I have finished all the prompts, but the only reason that I was able to do that and it was so successful with the reading vlog or the readathon was because I switched up my TBR a lot to read a bunch of graphic novels and manga. Um, so I'm just going to go over what I read and just finish out this vlog so that I can have it posted tomorrow. Um, we've got quite a busy day ahead of us, so let's just go over what I read. The only book that I read was Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I gave this two stars. It wasn't, wasn't what I was expecting from a fantasy author, and it was extremely predictable. I knew what was happening right off the bat, um, like less than 10% in, but the writing was good, and it definitely kept me intrigued enough to want to ensure that what I thought was going on was going on and um it yeah I just didn't expect a fantastical author to write a book like that but also I liked the character of Piranesi and I liked how we were in this really strange setting um so did I say that I read that for folklore mythology and odd setting and then for the LGBT prompt LGBTQ plus prompt I read In the Low Low Woods by Carmen Maria Machado this is has representation uh, for the author and then for the characters. So we're following two teenage girls, L and V, and they live in a small town where like coal mining is essential and like everyone works in the mine and everyone gets sick from the mine. There's like bootleg coal miners. Um, they just the whole town revolves around the coal mines. Um, but of course, that's like hurting the land and stuff. Um, and then we get into like um l and v when we first meet them they're in a movie theater and something happens and they forget like what like they're basically it's like being uh drugged or whatever like they wake up in the theater and they're like we don't know what happened and so they're trying to figure out what happened to them there's the designated uh witch of the small town that they go and ask for help for um, and there's m something more paranormal and sinister happening in the town. I give this three stars. It was fun. It is part of the, is it Hill House comics or something like that? It is like, it looks to be a series where they take authors and have them write graphic novels. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was fun. I would recommend it if it's something that sounds interesting to you. Um, and then... I read, for my unusual format, I read uh, volumes 14, 15, and 16 of Something is Killing the Children by James Tinian. Uh, so within this storyline, we're following Erica, who is a monster hunter. She belongs to like this secret society. And uh, she ends up in this small town where kids are being killed by these monsters that only they can see. And so this secret society, they kind of do like damage control, they kill these monsters. Um, we don't know too much about them, but within these three volumes, we end one storyline and start another one where we go back to when Erica is a child and how she ends up being in this society and becoming a monster hunter. So I'm really going to... Uh, or I really am enjoying that aspect of it and I'm looking forward to more issues to like get more of a backstory. Um, and so then the last prompt, is that the last one? I think so. Non-human point of view, I think is the last one. I hope so. Um, you've seen me talk about them, but the girl from the other side, I read volumes one, two, and three. I was super obsessed. It's my new obsession. I can't wait to get the rest from the library. Um, it is about a young girl who the further along we get in the series, the more we're learning about like there's something to her 
some kind of like chosen one or prophecy. Um, but uh, when we first meet her, she is being cared for by this like inhuman creature, like this supposedly evil entity. And we don't know why and like why she's with him and why he's so open to taking care of her. So that kind of unveils as we go throughout the story. But um, they're just like the best of friends and it's super cute and really fun. And I, like I said, I can't re wait to read the rest of the volumes. Um, I gave the first three, five stars. I have no complaints. I like the writing style. I like where the story has gone so far. And yeah, I'm excited for more. Um, and then one last book that I want to talk about that I read, which could go for a couple prompts, but that's Thornhill by Pam Smy. Um, this is really cool. Graphic novel, young adult. Um, this girl moves into a house next door to an abandoned orphanage and it's like just falling apart. Um, nobody is taking care of it. And she starts to notice like some activity going on over there. And then the other half of the story are these diary entries that we're reading from a girl who was at the orphanage like 15 years prior and she's being bullied. So she's trying to not be bullied, possibly seek revenge. So what's fun about that is um, the first storyline with the girl moving into the new house um, is all told in pictures and um, like we don't get any words or narration or anything. It's just simply told in pictures and then we've got, like I said, the diary format for the girl living in the orphanage 15 years prior. I give this like four and a half stars. It's really frustrating and really sad what um, Mary is going through, the bullied girl, but this was really cool. Like I think it's a great idea. I would love to read like more stories like this with the dual storylines and the different formats. It was, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. Highly recommend it. And I just happened to grab it while I was at the library. Um, and since I was changing up my TBR so much, I figured like might as well get it and start it and it'll count for something. But that's it. That's all the prompts. This was a lot of fun. Um, I'm looking forward to our next couple of selections over the next couple of months. Um, and so I will try to keep things up to date on my community tab. But again, uh, link down below for the Stacks of Strange Instagram. There you'll find like all of our um, announcements for live shows, for what we're reading. And then the Discord is also linked down below where we chat throughout the month about the book that we're currently reading. And uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's everything. All my usual links are down below. If you've made it this far through my vlog, thank you for watching. Thanks for supporting my channel and I'll see you guys later.